All right, in this lesson, I'm going to talk about the magnetic force and the magnetic field. These two concepts are very interrelated. One is used to define the other. And the weirdest thing about this force in particular is that the force and the field don't point in the same direction. This is in contrast to the gravi gravitational force and the gravitational field, for example, because on Earth, the gravitational field points down and the gravitational force points down, but these will be in different directions by something called the right hand rule. Let's first start with magnetic force. It itself is kind of a weird concept. Okay, magnetic force. It is the force exerted on moving charges in a magnetic field. The force exerted on moving charges in a magnetic field. Now, the next thing we'll write down is pretty important. It's what makes this force kind of strange. One of the things that makes this force is kind of this force kind of strange. It's the fact that this force can only be present if the charge is in motion and if the charge's velocity is not parallel to the magnetic field. So maybe if these blue lines in the paper represent my magnetic field going sideways. A charge that's moving sideways will not be affected by the magnetic force, but if it deviates from the lines at all, it will have some force. This force can only be present this force can only be present if the charge is in motion and if the charge's velocity is not parallel to the magnetic field. This force can only be present if the charge is in motion and if the charge's velocity is not parallel to the magnetic field. bounce around a little bit. Next we'll define the magnetic field and we'll have an equation that links these two together. Now magnetic field is one of those concepts that we've seen it's one of those concept, concepts, much like what we've seen before, that it has a, an equation as its definition. It doesn't really have an, a definition in words. It instead is governed by an equation. So I'm just going to write, just so I have something to write down here, I'm going to write governed by an equation. So if I were to write out the definition of words, I would say... Um, the quotient of magnetic force divided by test charge times velocity times sine theta. It, it doesn't make any sense to us in words. So heck, let's just jump to the equation. Here it is. It's a fraction. It's going to be capital B equals 
And then on top of the fraction, we'll have capital F sub B. On the bottom of the fraction, we'll have a, quite a few more letters. We'll have Q naught. And that Q naught will be in absolute value multiplied by V sine theta. A lot to break down in this equation. Very common question I get is, why are we using B for magnetic field? That's because B is one of the letters left over. We've already used M. M is our letter for mass. A very large M, a capital M, is used for the mass of a planet. So B is just one of the letters that's left over. It's not used for anything else. I'm going to put uh, vector hats on top of these just for fun. You can leave them out if you don't prefer. It just means that each of these has a direction. Each of those has a, each of those is a vector. So let's label each piece. First, I'll start with B. So of course, B is the magnetic field. And it has one of the coolest units. It's a capital T for Tesla. And that's not the car. It's named after Nikola Tesla, one of the craziest mad scientists of all time, one of the most brilliant people that ever lived, Nikola Tesla. He discovered uh, alternating current and many other things in electricity. So they decided, hey, let's name that after him. Another unit that's often used for magnetic field is called the Gauss. I don't know if we'll use it. Maybe. Um, let's go ahead and label FB as well. I don't want to bring my arrow in there. It looks too beautiful. Uh, so that, of course, is the magnetic force. And like all forces, the unit is capital N Newtons. We'll go back down to the bottom. This is the charge of the object being tested. So it's like the charge. They're calling it a test charge. In my opinion, it doesn't really matter. You could just say charge, but I'll... Stick with the book, charge, charge of test charge. So basically you can't have a field, you can't define the field without having a charge that you're referencing. So we're referencing a specific charge. If there's, yeah. V is velocity. And theta is the angle between B and V. We're always going to use degrees for angles in our class. So we've got magnetic field in Teslas, charge of a test charge in coulombs, velocity in meters per second, angle between B and V, because B and V are arrows in degrees, and the magnetic force which is in Newton's. The weirdest concept about these two things is that, like I said, they don't point in the same direction. In order to figure out the direction that they point, we have to use something called the right hand rule. So basically you hold your right hand up to the problem that you're discussing, and it'll help you figure out what direction the force is, what direction the velocity is, and what direction the magnetic field is. So I'll discuss the right hand rule here. This is the first right hand rule. There's a second right hand rule that applies to the magnetic field created by a wire. Or maybe it's the force acting on the wire, I forget. But it has something to do with current and uh, magnetism. But for this one, here's how it's defined. Each of, our, 
each part of our hand is, is used to represent something different. So in the right hand rule, the way I think of it, and the way most people define it is, um, these fingers represent the magnetic field. They point in the same direction. There's many of them to indicate that the magnetic field is kind of vast. The thumb represents the velocity of the charge, and I can turn it like this. I can't turn it back because that friggin' hurts. So you can turn your velocity like this. Um, notice if it goes if it goes parallel, like we eh, forget about that. We can move that. That's velocity. So magnetic field, velocity, and then your palm represents the force, the magnetic force. A good way to remember it is. Well, this looks like a field to me. It's a bunch of lines together. This is the velocity because you use your thumb to indicate where something should go, uh, like a hitchhiker thing. That's what I think of. But the easier one for me is that the palm is used for force. You can slap something with the front of your hand. That's the best way to exert force on something. You're not going to use your thumb to hit somebody in the head. You'd use the front of your hand. So that's where the force comes out. Each of those represents a direction. Uh, so if you know two of those things, you can figure out the third. Here's the right, the right hand rule then. Your fingers are the magnetic field your palm is the magnetic force and your thumb is the velocity of the charge if you want to add that. That's the right hand rule. So, like I had on the paper here, when I had my hand down there, go off to the side so in case you're still writing. Um, if the field points this way and the velocity of the charge points this way, the magnetic force is going to push that charge down into the page here. If the magnetic field is that way and the velocity is that way, still going to go down. If the magnetic field is this way, and the velocity of the charge is moving that way, it's going to push the charge up. We'll see some more examples of that. Don't freak out. I'm going to draw a picture of it because there's going to be a little bit of symbolism here. As usual, my drawings are museum worthy. That's probably not even, that's not even my worst. Now remember, it's got to be the right hand. So it's not a left hand like this. This is a right hand pointing like that. I'll do the other hand. Well, I'll do the, the right hand pointing in the other direction. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> my man's got some thick fingers. That's all right. Okay. So. In this picture, we've got a B field. They call it the B field. The magnetic field going out. We got the velocity like this. So if I line my hand up with this paper, I can see that the chart is going to be pushed up out of the page. To represent something pointing out of a page, and this is just good to know for math, you do a dot and a circle. It's unfortunate that we write our notes on a two-dimensional surface called paper, and so we need a way to represent a third dimension. That's what this is. It's like an arrowhead pointing out at you. See the dot there? That's what it's supposed to represent. I guess it's like a pen, the dot of a pen. 
That's what that's supposed to look like. And this is FB. So my hand was like that. Force comes out of the palm. We'll look at this one. Looks like the force is going to go into the page because my palm is pointing into the page. So similar idea. There's velocity. Uh, there's my B vectors. To represent a... Oh, look at that. My pen is perfect. It looks like an X. I think what I've heard that they're supposed to... It's, it's meant to represent the feathers of an arrow. But just coincidentally, I just have a pen that looks just like that. So my pen is pointing into the page. Here's my vector pointing into the page. So the force would push into the page. We'll do a quick example of this. A little bit of the maths. All right, here we go. This concept I know is used for isolating certain uh, certain isotopes of uranium. If you're gonna make a uh, uranium, if you're gonna isolate certain, okay. To create an atomic bomb or to use uranium in a nuclear reactor, you have to separate the specific types of uranium. Some of them are a little heavier, some of them are a little lighter. And so we can use the concept of magnetism to cause them to spin in a certain direction um, to, by exerting a certain amount of force on them. So that's something that this would be useful for. Here we're going to look at something called a particle accelerator. I know very little about these except they accelerate particles. A proton in a particle... Accelerator has a speed of 5.0 times 10 to the sixth meters per second. It encounters A magnetic field whose magnitude is 0 0.40 Teslas and whose direction is 30 degrees from the velocities, as in the velocities direction, if you want to elaborate more. Part A will be calculate F, B. Calculate the magnetic force. Let's go over it again. A proton in a particle accelerator has a speed of 5.0 times 10 to the 6th meters per second. It encounters a magnetic field whose amount or magnitude is 0 0.40 teslas and whose direction is 30 degrees from the velocities. Calculate magnetic force. So we'll drop in on the equation that was provided before. B equals FB divided by Q naught times V sine theta. And technically, that's in the absolute value. So we're just solving for FB. Pretty easy problem because everything else is given. Um, velocity is there, meters per second. B is 0.4 because it's in Teslas. Um, 30 degrees is the angle theta. So 
So let's plug in the numbers. I'm going to solve for f of e first real quick. So if I multiply both sides by this denominator, it'll cancel out here. It'll end up over there. So if you want to see the math, you can multiply both sides by q naught v sine theta. And this is what you'll get. Plug it in the numbers. fb equals 0 0.4. 0 0.40 times the charge of a proton. I almost forgot to mention. We're looking at a proton here. The charge of the proton, I would always provide this for you. This is a constant. If you were to Google right now, what's the charge of a proton? You would get this. It might actually say uh, plus one, but if you said, what's the charge of the proton in coulombs? This is what would pop up. 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th times 5.0 times 10 to the 6th times sine 30. And there you have it. If you type that in your calculator and round to, it looks like the reference I'm using, they used two sig figs. It'll be 1.6 times 10 to the negative 13th. I prefer three sig figs, so if you do type it on your calculator, write three, but just notes, doesn't matter. Technically, since we're finding a vector, vectors always have direction, so I need to figure out what the direction is. On a, uh, on a test, I would have to provide the picture for you or use some sort of language here. They don't really say what way it's going, so I'm just going to draw the two. Uh, let's say that the velocity is this way and the magnetic field is this way. The question then becomes, is FB pointing into the page or is FB pointing out of the page? Well, I got to line it up with the right hand rule. What is the right hand rule? What does it say again? It says, it says your fingers are the magnetic field and your thumb is the velocity. So I'm going to line my fingers up with the magnetic field. If I go like this, if I go like this, line my fingers up with the magnetic field, my thumb is supposed to be the velocity, so I can't bring my thumb over there. i got to flip my hand. Now I'm lined up. Here's my magnetic field. Here's my thumb. So what direction is my palm? into the page. So you line it up, you ask yourself what direction your palm or whatever's missing is, you have it from there. I think there's one detail I missed, um, and that's what happens if this were a negative charge. So if it's a negative charge, uh, the force actually points out of your the back of your hand so if this were so you know we've got a we've got a proton passing like this there's a magnetic field pointing that way so it's going to push the proton down towards the floor if this were an electron the force comes out of my palm uh, not my palm the back of my hand so the, the electron would get pushed upwards so a proton would get pushed into the page in this scenario that's what it is if I said electron, it would get pushed back by a palm. So let's uh, let's amend our right-hand rule definition. You can write it in the margins, or you can write it uh, in addition if you have space. I don't really have much space, so I'll write it below. Hugely important note. If the moving charge is negative, the back of your hand is the force. I'm going to underline that.
Very important, very important part of the rule. So if it's a net, I'm going to repeat that. I know I'm beating a dead horse here. Sorry. What are we looking at? If it is a positive charge, your palm is the magnetic force. If it's a negative charge, the back of your hand is the force. So that's magnetic field and magnetic force. Once you've copied it all down, post on Google Classroom. Hit me with your questions, and I'll talk to you soon.